Assalamu alaikum students, this is Farwa Patur, your O-level computer science instructor and welcome to another video. In the previous video, we have started the topic of standard methods of solution and in this video, we are going to talk about the first standard method, totaling in detail. I'm going to show you all the line of code that is going to help us to calculate total of any given list of numbers. Yes. The main purpose of this method, as discussed earlier, is to find out the total of a given list of numbers. Or let's suppose you have an array of numbers, maybe 10 numbers, 20, 40, the numbers doesn't matter how many they are. You have to calculate the sum of it or you need to calculate the total of all of these numbers. So you will be using this totaling method. Now, let me quickly move towards this line of code. And in this video, we are going to see in detail that how this is going to work for a list of numbers containing five entries or marks for five students. Look. Here I have a student mark. Student mark is basically an array or we can say it's a list of numbers that is containing marks for the students. So let's assume that we have five students in a class. I'm making it small, a uh, short class size so that we can just quickly do it with better understanding. Now, five students means that you're going to have five numbers, one number for each student. So in the array for student number one, let's suppose I have 74 marks, then I have 25, then I have 97, then I have 82, then I have 63. So let's suppose these are the different marks for the students in my class. Now, what I need to do, the thing is, I want to calculate the total of these marks. So this totaling method is going to help me in that. How? Let's start with the first line of code here. There is a variable total which is initiated with a value 0. But the final value of total will be calculated in this same variable. Now, the next thing is your for loop. We know that for is an iterative loop that helps you to do things repeated, repetitively. What it means that you are going to repeat the line of code that is inside for loop in iterations. It will be repeated how many times? This is represented by the value of counter. Counter is a variable that will help us to tell the iterations of a loop. How many times a for loop is going to be run. So the counter value is initiated with a value 1 and it will go till the class size. So since I assumed my class sizes of five students, so this counter is going to run from one to five. So it means five times my for loop is going to run. Now let's quickly do all of these five iterations one by one to see the result. So now the first iteration, let me tell you or do it for you in detail. For the first iteration, what will happen? I know that the counter's value is initiated with 1 and the value for the total variable is initiated with 0. Now, when I go inside my for loop, what will happen? Just look at this line. This is very, very important. 
this one. This is the formula to calculate the total of the given numbers. So, what you're going to be doing when you are coming in the for loop, you will be using this formula to calculate the value of total. So, for the first iteration, it will be total equals to total plus student mark. And remember that student mark counter means that the value of counter will be placed here. That is 1 for first iteration. Now, what you will do, student mark 1 means that you are going to see index 1 for this array. Look at these values. The index 1 is over here. This is the first value for this array. Student mark 1. At index 1, we have a value of 74 for the student mark. Plus, since the value of total is 0, so I'm going to place 0 here. And then the new value for the variable total will be 0 plus 74, that is 74. The first iteration ends here. Now quickly moving towards the second iteration. When we will finish the, all the five iterations, then we will be having the final value for the variable total. In the second iteration, the counter is incremented. Why the counter is incremented? Because when you go after this line, when you calculate the value of total, then you go next. Next counter means now the counter is going to increment or 1, it will be the value plus 1. Previous value for the counter was 1. Since it is incremented, so now it becomes 2. And the value for total variable, as we have calculated in first iteration, will be forwarded. It is 74. For the second iteration of for loop, the value of total becomes Total equals to total plus student mark. Remember, now the index will be 2. Why? Because we have used counter variable to represent index of student mark array. So, the value of counter is 2 in second iteration. I am placing 2 here as an index. Student mark 2 means now you are going to get the second value of a student mark array. It is 25. So 25 will be added with the value of total, which is 74 for the first iteration. Now, we are going to take a sum of 74 plus 25. It will be 99. So the value of total in the second iteration will become 99. Similarly, for the third iteration, the change will be in the value of counter. Since counter will be incremented after every iteration, so counter's value becomes 3 now. And the value of total will be forwarded from the second iteration and it is 99. Calculate the value of total again when it comes inside the for loop. So it is total plus student mark. And remember, since the counter value is turned to 3, so it becomes index 3 for a student mark. Index 3 has a value 97. So we will place 97 here. And it will be added with the value 99, that is previous value for total. The new total becomes 99 plus 97. So it is 196. So this is a total value for three students. Now for the fourth iteration, 
again the same thing will be repeated and total will be calculated according to the same formula here the counter will be incremented to 4 and the total variable is changed to 196 applying the same formula that is inside the for loop total plus student mark now the index becomes 4 since the counter value has changed to 4. Now we will see student mark 4 value over here which is 82. So we will be adding 80. Is it 82 or 84? It's 82. 82 will be added with 196 which is the old value for total. So now the new value for total becomes 278. Now for the final iteration or the final student, we have the fifth iteration for the for loop. In the fifth iteration, the value of counter will be 5. It's incremented one time. Then the value of total is forwarded from here that is 278 and then the new total will be calculated as total plus student mark with index 5 since the counter value has changed to 5 now. Let's see student marks. The fifth student acquired 63 marks. So we will put 63 here. It will be added with 278 equals to 341. So this is your final total value for 5 students. There will be no 6th iteration. Why? Because remember that the class size was 5. And the loop is going to run from 1 till 5. So for the sixth value of counter, it will terminate. So this is how we calculated the value for five students. Similarly, we can calculate for 10 students, 20, 30, and so on with the same line of code, just the data will be increased. So this is an amazing method that can also be used in different ways. How? Let's suppose I went to shopping and I purchased 10 items and I know the prices of each of these items as well. One item $20, two item $35. Similarly for 10 items when I know the price of each of the item by using the same totaling method I can find out my total price. So this is a very good thing about these standard methods that you can transform it according to your wish. Okay, so thank you so much. I hope everything is clear to you. If you have any queries, you can comment below and do not forget to subscribe the channel. For the next video, we will be starting the method of counting. Stay tuned, stay connected. Bye-bye.